dope. This is Deontay DeBron from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. All right, man, let's talk about Deontay Wilder. Um, I was hearing people, we did like the little live after the fight. I did a short one, but I took two muscle relaxers. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. I was out like a light switch. <laughs> See that nigga listen to Drake? I told you he liked Drake. Oh, he don't care. I mean, uh, you know, the Drake fanboys is crazy out here. You know, it don't matter if Drake, I was arguing with my mama. You know, I don't really think it matters if Drake right or no i'm like be quiet you don't know shit about it. we ain't listening to rap since they came out with the tootsie roll nigga <laughs> hey no drake man i don't care if you ain't writing you know kids are more lame and, 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 and like man shit y'all out y'all don't know nothing y'all know the, the elements of hip-hop what's the five elements of hip-hop y'all know about the b-boy graffiti y'all didn't even know the dj was the star of the show what's him i don't care if you're mc or not man i'm gonna <laughs> Niggas ain't never seen nothing. <laughs> that nigga just ain't no drink and he likes it and, and you know what I'm saying? They be mad. Well, I'm a hip hop, I'm a hip hop head, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, no, niggas a cornball. Not saying he don't make good music. He just more like Swiss beats and, you know, he more like, you know, Dr. Dre and shit. But nonetheless, he came up in the chat that, you know, Malik Scott trying to make him into a boxer, and that's where it went wrong at. Too late in his career, they should have been seeking to destroy, and, you know, at the end of the day, that, uh, I mean, that had a point to do with it. Me and a uh, line killer was speaking on it yesterday, a uh, modern Bruce was speaking on it yesterday. Um, too late in the game to turn him into a boxer, um, but also the Fury fights took something out of him in the, in the layoffs. When Wilder was at his best, he was fighting often, and, and he was fighting often. And a lot of these fighters that's, that's going to fall victim to fighting once or twice a year, we're never going to know how good they were or could have been. You know what I'm saying? We never know because they didn't have the activity. The prospect's not having the activity that they should have. Y'all saying, well, they fight less. It's, it's healthy. No, it's not healthy for them. If you turned your car over one time a year, you turned it on one time a year, the little old school you got in, in, the, in the garage. Like, bro, do you know shit gonna start rusting now? You gotta change the oil, gonna get old and dirty in there. The gasoline gonna, oh, that car gonna fall apart. You gotta turn it over often. You gotta take it around the block, a comp time, ride it to the liquor store and back, or, or do something, go downtown and back. At least once or twice a month. You know? And that's what happened in with, with boxers, bro. They starting to get stale and rusted and busted. Come on, man. Move up. Suck so let this lady over, bro. Women. Kappa, Alpha, Kappa, Alpha, Kappa, Kappa. I don't give a fuck. Get your Alpha, Kappa, non driving ass on. Oh. Yeah, women be all in the windshield like this. Like, where the fuck the road going? Where the road going? They ain't going nowhere. If you got your mirror set, you should be able to lay back like this. Why do women? Why do women be in the windshield like this? Like, you can't see the road. Shit is wild to me. You ain't making no dangerous and no awkward turn. I understand if you in the mountains, you gotta be like, you know, focus a little. Like, hey, women, be the, the chair be in the windshield and shit. Like. What? You shouldn't be driving. You shouldn't be driving if you if your chair, if your titties gotta touch the steering wheel, your chair, your forehead gotta be in the windshield glass. You should not be driving. They some non-driving creatures, man. Most of them. Most of them. But nonetheless, that's another video for another day for Patreon. But, but yeah, you know, it's a lot of factors in there, but I think the activity was one of the biggest things that happened to him, the ass over from Fury. Um, and, you know, y'all can blame Malik Scott all you want to, and, you know, Malik Scott's a teacher. He come from Philly, they teach. You know, y'all say, we can't teach you nothing because you, you knocked them out, and, and 
You know how many fighters, you know, in boxing that would have knocked their trainer out in their prime or beat the fuck out of their trainer in their prime? Just because you wasn't a great boxer don't mean you ain't a great coach. Man, it's quite frankly the opposite. Great boxers usually make, or great athletes usually make great shitty, shitty coaches, shitty trainers, and shitty general managers and presidents and shitty owners. So I don't, I didn't have a concern with him, you know, training with Malik Scott. I think Malik got a bad rap because, you know, he hit a rough patch in, in Deontay Wilder's career. You know, they hit a rough patch. You said, "Who's the rough patch?" You know, that second fight with Mark, that second fight he had to fire Mark Breland, I think that got a lot of people, and somebody mentioned this, against him, how he did Mark Breland. But him and Mark Breland been had issues. He been stopped listening to Mark Breland because he fell in love with his right hand. And when it, when somebody who, you know, is, who, you know, really don't listen to nobody and he fell in love with his power and he got the money, it's, you know, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. We've seen it many, many times before. Miguel Cotto, he fucked his career up by losing, leaving his uncle. He never was the same fighter. People could blame the Margarito fight, and that was probably 80, 90% of what happened. But the other 15 to 10%, 10 to 15% was him leaving his uncle. His brother, you know, he didn't want when these dudes get the money and they 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 get the status, then they tell they tell the trainer to fuck off. They start showing up, they start half-ass training. What happened to Mike Tyson? See, when you, you know, that's one thing Floyd better thank his daddy for. Because one thing Floyd gonna do, Floyd gonna train. Floyd gonna, you ain't gonna see you catch Floyd tripping like, strip, uh, uh, slipping like that in no fight. Floyd gonna train. When I'm, I'm having a league guy lazy in his career. And that's another thing, you know, that's when the, that's when the journey really started. How hungry you could be when, when success comes. And not too many people got that work ethic once they reach their goal. A lot of these dudes get a title and they happy. But Adrian Broner got title, he was good. All oh, that shit went out the window. What's that song called? Y'all sung in the New York in the early 2000s? I'm jumping out the window with the. I'm jumping. Y'all some dancing ass niggas out there in New York. Y'all oh, niggas, man, them niggas be dancing like a motherfucker. Chicken noodle soup, chicken noodle soup, chicken eat, yeah, nigga, man, them niggas some dancing ass niggas, man. I talk about Diddy, but that's a microcosm of New York, man. I think it's just some dancing ass niggas, man. With a razor blade in their pocket. Come on, man. Them niggas can hoop, can't shoot. <laughs> and them some dancing ass, crazy Vaseline eating ass niggas, man. New York niggas is crazy, bro. Just to put it out there. You don't want no beef with them niggas. Them niggas is crazy. They gonna kill you by making you eat a gallon of Vaseline and shit. Them niggas is die father for two. Where my nigga Ghost say? He said, damn, Ghost, you the only nigga I know when the, when the cops come down hard, they toast. <laughs> I forget what song that was off of, uh, of Supreme Clientel, one of the greatest rap albums of all time. But, uh, but yeah, man, like, you can't blame Malik, Malik for everything. He tried to get me water more patient and make it and have him set up his right hand. But, you know, what he forgot was, hey, he shouldn't be so patient if he ain't going to use the jab. If he kept that jab going, he should easily beat Zane. That jab and, and being able to, you know, stay on the outside, you know, it was a lot of things that they didn't, they, he didn't develop. You know, a consistent jab, uh, uh, a jab to the body, body work left hook he really made it that far with a right with a, with a right was just a bit was just natural ability and not developing his skill set you know at one point his prime fight was Bermain Stavern the first one that was his prime the way he boxed Bermain Stavern kept him on the outside it had he had he developed off of that fight Wilder probably would have went down as the greatest heavyweight of all time one of them the way he moved the way he jabbed the way you know he would, you know, Wilder has so much ability, bro. It was sickening, bro. So much, so much potential skills that could have been developed. It was sickening. It was sickening. But, you know, is it time to retire? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it was a good run. 
Now, if you want to take a really soft touch at, in, in Alabama and uh, you know, Atlanta and get a and just go out on uh, go out with a win, I'm cool with that too. I think Turkey Alashik would, would set that up for him. You know, I think Turkey Alashik would set that up for him. I think that'd be the next. I think that'd be the only thing that'd be acceptable if he he turns around and um, has a going away fight in Alabama or somewhere in the area of Atlanta. And he takes a really soft touch, and you know he go out there and he get a win, and that's the end of his career. I would like to see him end his career on a win. You know, I like to see him end his career on a win. People say he should fight Francis and Gano. Nah, I, I just fight somebody real, like on a you know I don't know, get Chris Ariel. I don't know, he fought Chris Ariel already. I don't know, get somebody on the low end of the spectrum. Um, you know, get get a young brother on the low end of the spectrum give my opportunity to make some bread like you know when he was coming up um turkey i was a, a cash him out i think that's i think that's the way to go in my humble opinion um give a young brother an opportunity somewhere and um uh, and call, and call it a day man call it a day that's what i would do but, um, yeah gym number two i found parking right away so I mean, I clean out my car since I'm closer to the city. But I hey, appreciate y'all. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. That subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance. Get notifications. We go live or drop a video financially. Want to support the channel? Cash app dollar sign CJ Good 313. Venmo CJ Good 313. PayPal in the description. Uh, check out the Patreon. That's in the link here as well too. Peace.